You're listening to episode 26 of A Whole New You podcast. On today's show, Lori interviews Kate Kelleher from Be Balanced Hormone Weight Loss Centers. They discuss ways to balance hormones naturally and effectively. Welcome to A Whole New You podcast. I'm your co-host, Kim Maravich. I'm a registered nurse and author of the book, 360 Health. I'm joined by my dear friend, Lori Biddle, a health and wellness coach certified through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Our show exists to inspire and empower women to take charge of their health with weekly tips and conversation about self-care, mindset, nutrition, fitness, and clean living. Please keep in mind that the material provided in this podcast is intended as general information only and should not be used as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. We're thrilled to have you here. Let's get to the show. We'd like to start off by reading a five-star review that we got through iTunes. This one is from Chick Singer, and it's titled, So Insightful for Our Health. She writes, I have only listened to a few episodes, but I love the thoroughness of the topics, the scientific approach, and that both ladies are well-equipped in their research of health of the body. Thank you so much for taking the time to leave us a review. Reviews help boost our rankings in iTunes, and they help people find our show who might not already know about it. So if you're listening right now, if you could pause the show and head over to iTunes, we would appreciate it. You could subscribe there and also leave us a rating and review. And if you do, we'll be sure to read your review on a future episode. Now let's get to Lori's interview. Today I'm here with Kate Kellier from Be Balanced Hormone Weight Loss Centers. She's currently the owner of two franchise locations. One's in Murraysville, PA, and one is in Wexford, PA. And she has another one that's going to be opening in the South Hills towards the end of the year. So that's very exciting. And I attended uh, the grand opening in April at the Wexford location. And the founder of the Be Balanced program was there that day. She was given a presentation, and I seriously learned so much. Her name is Dawn Catello, and she wrote a book called The Hormone Shift, I actually purchased the book that day and she signed it for me, which was um, super exciting. But she works out of the uh, Lancaster location, um, which has been up and running for about 15 years. And um, it was the, I guess, the founding location as well. And, um, you know, I'm still continuing to learn more and more about this topic and this natural hormone balancing. And I'm thrilled to have Kate here today to d- really kind of dig into it for you guys. So she's going to start out talking a little bit about how she found Be Balanced and her experience in the program. Thank, thank you, Lori. Uh, a few years ago, I started on a journey um, to look for a new career, if you will, for the last you know third of my life. I'd been in corporate America for a number of years and was really seeking a a business opportunity, if you will, um, to find something that I was comfortable with, but also made a difference um, with the local community. And so after an exhaustive search of looking at 20 to 25 different opportunities, I came across uh, Be Balanced Hormone Weight Loss Centers. And, um, you know, at first I was really skeptical. Um, Natural hormone balancing was something I was really not so familiar with. However, I had spent years exercising like crazy, uh, following a you know, 1,000 to 1,200 calorie diet, and really getting nowhere um, from a weight loss perspective. I was closing in on probably 48 at the time. Um, I exercised six, seven days a week. I climbed Mount Everest to base camp and still could not lose a pound. So I thought, even though I was skeptical about Be Balanced and what it had to offer, I thought I couldn't lose. I might as well try the program. And if it worked for me, I knew there were you know, lots of women my age and around my age who could really benefit um, from the program. So I started with a you know, great deal of skepticism in terms of, you know, was it really going to be possible for me to lose 15 to 22 pounds in a month? I didn't believe it for a hot second. Um, was I really going to solve for my hot flashes and was I really going to sleep through the night? You know, those were great promises, but I really needed to see it before I was going to you know, move further with investing in this opportunity and bringing it to the local Pittsburgh area. So um, I, I went through the program probably over a little over a year ago now. And um, not only was I able to lose the weight, um, but also I sleep through the night. Um, I don't gain the weight, but I haven't gained any of the weight back. 
and uh, my high blood pressure has been resolved, significant medication reduction there. In addition, um, no longer have hot flashes and night sweats, and I'm right in the sweet spot of, of 50 now. And um, so I was thrilled in terms of being able not only to see those results, but then knowing that I'm not the only woman out there that is suffering from these types of conditions. So um, I'm thrilled to bring it to not only Wexford, but as Murraysville and um, further soon uh, into the South Hills area. I know, and we're thrilled to have you here. And this is just all so exciting. And, and before we started recording, Kate, you were telling me a little bit too about how much you had been exercising before you started this program, like, which I'm sure a lot of people are, um, and, and not really getting anywhere. And, and you had said something about the cortisol, which we're going to get into this more later, but I just wanted to touch on that too. Wow. Um, while we're still kind of on your experience. So prior to be balanced, I'd work out at least six days a week and sometimes doubles, um, you know, double twice a day. Um, in terms of the amount of exercise, the intensity was pretty high. Um, I love my Orange Theory membership. I went there quite frequently, and I still go there, but I go there uh, less often, and I maybe work out a little less intensely. Um, so what was previously six days a week, twice a day sometimes, is now probably a more reasonable three to four, and at maybe an intensity that makes more sense. Because one of the things I didn't realize at the time, but know now, is that my cortisol levels were being raised, which was counterproductive to um, my overall weight loss goal. Um, so now I exercise more from a stress relief um, perspective and to feel good, um, but also keeping that in balance um, with cortisol and with stress because that's the last thing I need to do um, is add more cortisol and stress demand um, to what I'm doing every day. Additionally, I've incorporated a lot more meditation um, and a lot more relaxation um, therapy into the daily routine. And between both of those things have really found um, a balance, if you will. So you can actually work out less and lose weight faster. Isn't that great to know, ladies? That is, uh, that's super uh, great perspective, you know, and it really works because Kate experienced this firsthand too. And I'm sure she's not the only one. But what she's going to talk a little bit about, you know, next for us is you know, all these different hormones that we have in our bodies and how they're kind of working together and sometimes not working together um, when you have imbalances. And when I went to the grand opening, Don kind of ran through this presentation and I had asked Kate to come here and share it with us today because, uh, you know, I, again, I learned so much about how the different hormones work together and um, she's going to share that with us now. So the American lifestyle and uh, food supply is, is full of stress. Um, it is a common factor and common knowledge that the American lifestyle, particularly for women, is high stress. We're trying to do a lot um, between juggling careers, uh, parents, uh, children, um, you know, there's just a lot of stress going on in our lifestyle. In addition to that, the food supply is full of stressors, uh, not least of which is 80% of what you can buy in the grocery store has, has added sugar in it. Um, when you look at those stressors, it's actually stress um, and chronic stress, which really disrupts um, some key hormones. And when those key hormones are disrupted, it really causes some significant um, imbalances that lead to symptoms such as weight, weight gain or stubborn weight, as well as some of the perimenopause and menopausal uh, symptoms that many women face. Um, so the first thing we are working with when we're talking about imbalances is insulin. Um, insulin can become imbalanced through two key ways. The first is stress. When high levels of cortisol are present, it can disrupt our blood sugar levels, and that disrupts insulin. And additionally, um, when uh, we eat a lot of carbs and sugars, which is part of the American diet, um, it also causes blood sugar to rise and therefore insulin levels to rise. When we have higher levels of blood sugar or insulin, we are burning that for fuel instead of our own fat. So this leads to the first imbalance, if you will, which is insulin imbalance or stubborn weight. Now, most men and younger women can go on a keto or an Atkins, just a low-carb, low-sugar diet, and they can bring their blood sugar and then therefore their insulin levels down. 
However, most women, particularly over the age of 35, have a secondary imbalance. And that relates to the relationship between cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and our female hormones, which is estrogen and progesterone. So the first component is cortisol. And um, we were built um, from a stress response perspective to periodically have surges in the need for cortisol when we were running from lions or tigers or whatever. Um, And, um, you know, that just caused us to need short bursts of energy for flight uh, from the major risk. However, when our bodies these days are mostly under chronic stress, and we just weren't built to um, really operate efficiently at high levels of cortisol. Cortisol is a good hormone. It protects our organs from the impact of stress. It keeps us alive. However, um, over time, our bodies become tired and can't keep up with the production of cortisol. So it needs to take building materials um, from elsewhere to keep up with the demand for cortisol because our bodies will prioritize cortisol production over everything else because it's survival. So what our bodies will then do, it will take um, our good guy, good girl hormone, which is progesterone. Progesterone is one of two key sex hormones for females. First is progesterone and the second is estrogen. Uh, those two are meant to be in a yin and yang relationship. They're supposed to be balancing, and from you know early on, they typically are. We're, when we're in balance, we feel really good. Our periods are manageable. Um, we kind of go through life, um, you know, in the ebbs and flows. And estrogen and progesterone are going up and down in sync with one another. However, when we have sustained periods of stress. Um, our bodies will take the building blocks from progesterone and convert it to cortisol. Now, progesterone is our diuretic. It's our calming hormone. It keeps estrogen in check. So progesterone, um, when it's not in balance, leads to fluid issues like high blood pressure, breast tenderness, um, weight gain, um, because it's not holding estrogen in check. Estrogen is stimulatory. Estrogen likes to stimulate tissue growth, which is great for hair and for for building babies and all that good stuff. However, when left uncontrolled or out of check um, with progesterone, then it can create some chaos. And typically that looks like weight gain right in the middle, like right on our bellies and then in our hips. Um, Additionally, when um, we're out of check there, our moods, anxiety, um, both of those things start to go a little haywire as well. So progesterone is really needed um, to keep estrogen in check. And that's kind of the first thing we start to see move in our mid-30s is progesterone because it's being taken to um, fulfill the needs from a cortisol perspective. Additionally, we're getting older. Um, And as we get older, you know, our bodies are starting to change. And the first thing that starts to come down is, is progesterone because it is produced when we naturally ovulate. But as we get older, our our ovulation cycles are starting to change. So it's really important that we protect that progesterone and um, keep our estrogen in check. Yeah, and and it's so interesting how stress plays into all of that, too, um, from the cortisone perspective. Um, Because I thought that was really eye-opening when I heard this presentation for the first time, because... I know, you know, stress is a, is a problem. We all know that <laughs> for many reasons, but I didn't understand how it worked um, with the different hormones. And I think we're going to dive a little bit more into that imbalance, um, which Kate already touched on, you know, for the most part. Um, but when you, when you do have that imbalance, you know, what do you do there at your centers um, to help people with, you know, bringing that back in? And, and usually it's progesterone, I believe. Right. So um, typically women come to see us because they're experiencing a couple of key symptoms. Um, Typically that may be stubborn weight. So they've tried a lot of different programs. Um, Maybe they've tried traditional uh, diet or exercise, or maybe um, they're on hormone replacement therapy, but they really want to get off because of the risks associated with traditional hormone replacement therapy. Or um, they've got symptoms and they just really don't know where to go with it. Maybe they're experiencing hot flashes. Maybe they have some really bad PMS symptoms. Um, Maybe they've got 
you know, thinning hair or low libido or, or vaginal dryness, any one of those types of symptoms all along the spectrum, they may be looking for some support and help with. So the first thing we do is we actually have um, women complete a symptom-based hormone assessment. And you can do that online or you can also do it in our centers. And that really helps us understand um, what kind of symptoms the, the woman might be experiencing, our client might be experiencing. And from there, um, we can tell which key hormones are going to be at, at play and, and potentially out of balance. Because women know how they feel. And typically, if you, if you do a blood test or saliva test for hormones, that's fine. Um, you'll get some readings on that. Oftentimes, women are going to be in the range on those hormonal uh, tests. However, they still feel lousy. And so that's where we really can help with our symptom-based um, assessment. And so from there, we typically help women try and understand what they're trying to accomplish. What's their goal? Is it symptom relief? Is it weight loss? What is it that they're trying to achieve? What has their experience been? Um, and, and then therefore, then we go into our programs and help them understand what our key programs can, can do for them. And then based on that, if it's a good fit, great. If it's not, you know, that's fine too. Hopefully we've imparted a little bit of education in terms of how, how our bodies are working and what key interplays from a hormone perspective are at work. And if they can take something away from that, make it work in their everyday lives, that's great too. So that's a win. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, and again, all been very eye-opening to me. So you guys, your main focus is not, you always start with the hormone um, discussion and the symptoms and but that's not always your main focus in your programs. I know there's a lot of things involved, which um, I absolutely loved because in my health coaching program, I take, you know, a whole person approach as well. It's it's not just changing one little thing um, that's going to have this huge impact. Although it's hard to change a million things all at one time. So the best way to do it is to change one little thing and then add on one more little thing, and then add on one more little thing, and the cumulative effect of that can have a huge impact. And I know that's very similar to the approach that they take at Be Balanced, um, because they start with looking at you know the imbalance in the hormones, but then they help women get on a full program of, of whole wellness. And I... Um, going to give just a little sneak peek about what Kate's about to talk about. But, you know, one of the things I left there, um, and it's going back to what she was saying about her personal experience about, you know, easing up on the exercise and um, still losing weight, because as part of their program, they incorporate uh, meditation, daily meditation. And I and I just love that, just sitting down, closing your eyes, quieting the noise, and how that can have, you know, just as big of an impact sometimes on your overall, you know, overall well-being as you know, being on that treadmill for like an hour, you know, um, it's just a really, really interesting and eye-opening way to look at it. So Kate, if you don't mind, if you could walk us through kind of, I know there's a couple different programs, but if you could walk us through just the basics of what your program looks like. Our main program, which most women uh, will generally see a benefit from, is what we call our main, our main package program. And that really entails um, four key components, and, and that is to bring the key hormones into balance. And we're specifically speaking there about insulin, cortisol, and then getting estrogen and progesterone balanced. And in order to do that, um, there are four key components to the program. The first is a whole foods diet, and that does not mean you buy your food at Whole Foods. It may, you can if you want, but typically any grocery store will be fine. It just means non-processed food. So um, proteins, vegetables, and fruits is, is on the list and on the menu. And they're low glycemic, healthy foods um, that we incorporate. Um, that's the first component of the program. The second part of the program is really testing for food sensitivities. So when we start bringing foods back in, um, things like nuts, nut butters, uh, dairy, um, uh, complex carbohydrates, flour-based carbs, some of the gluten-based products, we start testing for that very, very deliberately because that is another source of stress and inflammation for many people 
is we may not have an allergic reaction, but we're sensitive. So we're really, really careful about not only is there an eating plan, if you will, to lose weight, but also an eating plan that's going to get you there from a lifestyle perspective to protect you from food sensitivities that ultimately cause inflammation. And the testing that you do, Kate, um, is basically kind of back to the symptom based, right? Like listening to your body, you know, and, and knowing what is, um, what's happening when you're adding these things back in, what kind of reaction are you having? Is, is that the testing that you're speaking of? Yeah. Yeah. So when you're eating cleanly, um, you know, non-processed foods, proteins, vegetables, and fruits, and then you start adding foods back in, your body is telling you pretty immediately and pretty clearly what's, what you're sensitive towards because you'll get a reaction. Um, either digestively, you'll have a hard time processing that new food that you're adding back in, or uh, the weight, the scale will go up a couple pounds. Um, you know, maybe you add an ounce of cheese back in, the scale goes up by, you know, two or three pounds. That doesn't make logical sense. Um, what that is is inflammation. And so as soon as you go find an alternative cheese to eat, the scale will return back to its preset level. So it's really a process of working through that. It's just as important as the clean eating is ultimately getting to a lifestyle that makes sense for you. Um, not only from a sensitivity perspective, but and then additionally, um, carbs and sugar. You know, they're part of our lifestyle. They're, you know, and we all want to eat carbs and sugar, and we should have a little bit of those in our life. Um, but the quantity that maybe you have, Lori, is maybe a quantity that's different for me um, in terms of what we're trying to balance and where we are from a, from a lifestyle perspective. I love that you take the whole bio-individual approach too. And, and we're so lucky that we can work with women one-on-one and do that. Um, it is. It's so powerful. So powerful. So, so whole foods and changing the diet is um, the first, first part. And that's where I start too, Kate. That's always where you got to start. And then you got to start with the food. But you can't only address the food. Right. Um, I mean, you can eat kale all day long, but when all these other things in your life are are out of balance, um, you're not going to get the results you want. So once the diet is figured out, um, what's your next step? So the next step that's incorporated is what we call relaxation therapy. Um, It is a pretty, it's approachable. Um, So a lot of women are intimidated by trying to start something, meditation, yoga, just yet more time commitments and or something that is, um, you know, maybe a little intimidating from that standpoint. So what we provide is two sound wave therapy um, tracks. One is guided meditation and one is uh, a musical overlay. We really ask women to spend 20 minutes a day, that's it, finding a quiet space and um, choosing one of these tracks, either the guided meditation or the musical overlay. And either one will work, um, but what it does is it reduces um, the stress level and reduces the demand for cortisol. We couple that with a little aromatherapy as well. Um, which helps from a re, you know recall perspective. If you're in a stressful situation, you know just outside the home, over time your body will associate that smell with a reduction um, in stress. Um, we'd love to change you know what's going on in women's lives, but unless we can get you into a deserted island and <laughs> eating fish and eating vegetables all day or fruit um, with low stress, we have to work with what folks have going on um, from a lifestyle. And so if we can get folks to just spend you know, 20 minutes a day doing a little bit of relaxation therapy, it goes a long way. Now, this by itself will not work. You can't just lay down for 20 minutes a day and not change uh, what we're eating and, and lose weight. That's not going to work. However, it is a critical component. Um, we want to keep you Um, moving forward um, from a weight loss perspective. And in order to do that, we've really got to get the demand for cortisol down. And this just really helps um, from that perspective. That makes so much sense. It makes so much sense when you stop and think about it that way. Um, And and circling back to the fact that sometimes this super intense exercise all day, every day is raising those cortisol levels. Um, And we already have enough stress in our life. So not to say that you don't need to move your body because we all know that's important too. Um, But really, I think what the majority of us women need is just to stop, (laughs) just to stop sometimes and be still. And I love that their meditations are guided because 
that's definitely easier said than done. I feel like I've done a lot of work on myself the last couple years, and I, I'd, I'd like to say that I'm pretty zen. <laughs> But I got in a quiet space recently, um, and, and I'm going to talk about this in some future episodes, but I tried um, a float spa, and you literally go into this pod, and um, it starts off with some music, but then it is like silence, darkness, <laughs> you're just alone with your thoughts, and my mind was crazy, and I said, you know, I, I thought I've done all this work, and I'm so zen, but my mind was racing. I couldn't, I couldn't seem to quiet it down. So it, it created a great awareness to me of, um, and sometimes it's creative and it's, you know, not necessarily stressful things, but it's just always going. Um, and I'm, I'm really trying to, to learn to control that. And, and, you know, hearing this from be balanced and experiencing that in the float spa has all kind of come together for me personally of, you know, making more of an effort to, um, to bring this daily practice into my life. And the guided meditation is super helpful because it takes your mind off of your thoughts and, and it kind of walks you through it. And of course, aromatherapy being a component, you know, you all know what a fan I am of essential oils. So to me, that's also a really key part because not only is it helping your mind um, to relax and as Kate was saying with this associating smells, that's huge, um, but there's physical things happening in your body when you're using those essential oils. So um, lots of goodness there. So we've got diet, um, elimination diet too, which is we've talked about in some previous episodes, which is where you start to identify your sensitivities. Um, and then, you know, guided meditation and aromatherapy are really big components. Um, are there more? Yep. Yep. Okay. So the third component is, um, natural supplementation. Mm -hmm. So as Lori mentioned, uh, the first component is a whole foods diet, really clean eating. The second is some relaxation therapy. And then the third is some natural supplementation. Um, the key supplementation is natural progesterone. So it's derived from wild yams, um, completely safe, does not interfere with any medications. Um, I'm one of our clients, um, may be on, um, additionally, it's helping to replenish, um, the natural progesterone levels that our bodies need. Um, the second is um, what we call a metabolic correction blend, and it's a homeopathic blend, and it is helping the adrenal system repair itself as well as, you know, perform the way it was meant to perform. Because a key part of the, of the diet, if you will, is putting your body into a state of ketosis. It's not a keto diet. That's a common um, misconception, but it is putting your body in a state of ketosis, which is a natural um, state of fat burning. And that's really what you want. You want to be burning your own fat for fuel versus sugars. And so um, with the metabolic correction blend, the whole foods diet, some adding a little natural progesterone and the um, stress reduction, those really all work together to help lose weight, but additionally stabilize your blood sugar levels. So that starts to eliminate some of the key symptoms that we spoke about. So what we start to see pretty immediately is hot flashes, night sweats, sleeping through the night. They all get corrected probably within the first two weeks. High blood pressure starts to come down um, if you've got it. Um, and if you're on sugar medications, those also need to start coming down um, because we're starting to bring all those key things into balance. And it doesn't take very long for some good stuff to really start happening. That's so exciting. I didn't realize you'd start to really see those results within like two weeks too, because I believe the main program is what, like 14, 14 weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it takes time to start adding these things in, making these tweaks, having your body adjust, but, um, very encouraging that you start to see some of those results in such a short period of time. And of course the, you know, the further you get through the program and the more you go through it, the better and better it's going to get. Um, so I would love to, at this point, dive in just a little bit, um, about, you know, the different hormone therapy that, you know, that Kate's speaking of, um, because I know a lot of us are afraid, right? And we've heard some, some scary things about hormone replacement therapy. And I think a lot of times 
this is um, misunderstood, what they're offering it be balanced, that it is hormone replacement therapy, you know, as we have traditionally have known and been afraid of. And um, I want to make sure that we speak directly to that and the difference between what they're offering there um, to maybe some of the more synthetic forms that we've all heard of and been, been afraid of. Uh, I want to make sure we, we kind of hammer that point home so that when you guys are done listening to this episode today, you have a, a full understanding of you know, what they're offering there, how it is natural, and um, it's coming at it from like a holistic perspective um, versus what some of the, the doctors are currently doing. Sure. So the traditional um, HRT or hormone replacement therapy um, really utilized um, synthetic estrogen and synthetic progestin, progestin. It was not progesterone, but progestin. And there was a landmark study done in 2002 called the Women's Health Initiative. Um, there really the media has played up uh, significantly. Um, You can read all about it, but there is a lot of press about the risk that was found with using synthetic uh, estrogen and synthetic progestin in terms of its risk to causing cancer. They, They ultimately had to discontinue the study because the risk levels were so high in terms of the incidence rates of women, um, experiencing female cancers. Um, that was how significant it was. So very good for very good reason. It's pretty scary, um, you know, to most folks to understand that. So what typically happens um, today is there are some bioidenticals that are used. Um, sometimes those are compounded, and those are those can be bioidentical, meaning um, they are not synthetic, but really mimic, um, you know, bioidenticals. Typically, that's using estrogen, um, which is stimulatory. Um, and as well as maybe a combination of testosterone or progesterone. You know, it really depends on how um, that mix is compounded. That's obviously less risky than HRT in a synthetic form. Bioidentical is less risky um, than the synthetic form. So that's, that's a good step in the right direction. However, using any form of estrogen is still very risky, uh, particularly if you've had any female cancer or you have cancer in your family because estrogen is stimulatory and um, it stimulates good cell growth as well as it stimulates, you know, potentially dangerous cell growth, which is related to cancer. So for many women who have symptoms that they need relief from, um, they may, they may be looking at different opportunities there um, and they may incorporate some level of estrogen in them. And that may be fine for some women, they'll get some relief there, but it's at a balancing point of balancing that against the risk that they are taking on for themselves. And some women, you know, that that may work out for. Um, We don't all get cancer, that may work out for you. For other women, that's just not an option on the table. Um, We get a number of women in our centers who um, have experienced cancer already, and the last thing they wanna do is reintroduce any risk there. So for good reason, their doctors are not allowing them on those bioidenticals. However, our program um, not only um, does not introduce those risks because we only supplement with natural progesterone, and actually because you're bringing, you're helping to tame down the estrogen, you're actually lowering your risk. Um, And that's proven as well. We have a lot of research there that backs that up. We don't solve for cancers, obviously. I'm not claiming that, but we do Uh, lower risk by keeping estrogen in check with natural progesterone. So there are some key components that are very different, and those are all trade-offs that women have to make when they're working with um, a medical provider. Um, We just believe and we know from the research that's been done that if you supplement natural progesterone, the other key hormones want to come into balance. They want to regulate. And so we can do that naturally without introducing risk which makes me feel better and makes me feel good about what we do and the impact that we're having um, in the community. For sure. Because I know even myself, my very first question was, you know, if I start to to use some of this hormone lotion, is it going to throw me off in the other direction? And and with, with what they're offering and what they're using, no, because it's, um, your body will release what it doesn't need. Right, Kate? Like, so it's like vitamin B and C. So um, we offer a progesterone cream. Um, that's one component of our programs. And that progesterone cream is a transdermal cream. It's, um, it, it's, uh, you put it on your thin skin areas. And your body will take what it needs and release 
what it doesn't, just like vitamin B and C. So when you have too much vitamin B and C, your body excretes um, (laughs) from a urinary perspective um, what it doesn't need. The same thing happens with our natural progesterone. Your body takes what it needs and releases um, what it does not. Yeah, it seems like there's nothing to lose with trying this, only something to gain. And and you kind of, well, we won't be gaining weight. <laughs> so we do have something to lose. We have weight to lose. <laughs> but from, um, you know, a perspective of being conservative, and as Kate was saying, you know, when she started into this, she was a little skeptical as well. Um, but, you know, as we talked through how it is all a very natural product, process. And it's again, coming at it from a holistic standpoint and just helping so many women. I mean, we are all experiencing these symptoms and, um, to bring all these pieces together is, is just amazing. Um, and get all those cylinders firing. That's what I always say, you know, it's, it's so necessary and to have a program in place, um, that addresses, you know, starting out of the gate with the hormone issues, um, because that's what most of us are facing. And then, you know, adding in all those other key components um, is just, oh, it's just so valuable. And we're so lucky to have you here in this area um, in Wexford for me, which is right down the road. I love it. And um, Kate was telling me at the beginning that I had mentioned, you know, her two locations and also the Lancaster location. But for those of you that are listening in from all different um, states and especially different parts of Pennsylvania, um, there are lots of other locations um, out there, you know, so hop on Google, do a search for Be Balanced Hormone Weight Loss Centers and see um, or even your website. Right, Kate? Yes. Um, to hop on there and just see, you know, what other locations are available and, you know, what's close to you. Anything else you want to say in closing? I just want to thank you, Lori. You're you're doing a great job and I really love these podcasts and all the information um, that you're sharing um, with with the community out there. And I just think it's really fantastic and I appreciate um, the opportunity to be here. All right. Well, I'm excited that you were here and I hope the listeners all find this as helpful as I know I personally did. So thanks for taking your time out today, Kate, from your very busy schedule. Um, And I know she's, you know, stepping away from the people that she's helping today to bring all of you this wonderful information um, and continuing to help people. And we thank you for that, Kate. That's it for today. For more from Kim, you can go to KimMarovich.com. For more from Lori, go to simplyempoweredllc.com. We're always open to listener questions or suggestions for the show. You can email those to contact at a whole new you podcast.com. We'd also love it if you joined our Facebook community and followed us on Instagram. Just search for a whole new you podcast. And lastly, if you'd be so kind as to leave us a rating and review in iTunes, we would really appreciate that so more people can find our show and join our community. We'll see you next week.